thanks so much for joining me in this breakout session. Um, so just a disclaimer, my, I'm here with my daughter, she's four and um, she can get wild. So, but this is, this is life now and this is <laughs> working at home um, and homeschooling and all that. So okay, I'm just gonna wait a little bit. Hi, Yobi. <laughs> she's um, building a oh, castle. I probably should rile her up. Okay, I, yeah, I, I want to rile her up. Way too much. <laughs> no, no, no one's talking to you. <laughs> oh, my bad. My bad. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna um, just tell you a little bit about myself um, first before we, you know, go into everything. So, um, um, Tech, software engineer at Booz Allen, and I am actually also a data scientist. I recently joined Booz's awesome program um, called Women in Data Science. It's an incubator, and I'm really excited about doing this, um, even though it adds about more onto my software work week, because I used to be an ICU nurse, and we are actually um, doing some time series analysis on EMS calls. So I'm really excited about that. Um, cool. The next part of my life, yeah, it's mm -hmm. awesome. Um, I'm like, we just we we're only like three weeks into it, so um, it's great, and I I love Booz Allen for having this for us. Um, also, part of my daily work life is that I'm a published author, so I write every day. I used to be a ghostwriter, um, and then I just decide to write for myself. I've I'm on my 138th book right now, so um, I write under two pen names, so I do that every day. Um, and then the third thing that I do, I'm a wellness coach, so I help women um, reach their goals like fitness, nutrition, personal development. A lot of moms reach out to me about coding, writing, and stuff like that, so I do that. And uh, most importantly, like I said, I'm a mom, and I'm a single mom, and my daughter has a heart defect and kidney disease. So I took her out of her Montessori school, and so I'm homeschooling her. Mm -hmm. um, I, she does have tutors throughout the day, you know, different days, but I'm homeschooling her. Um, so I'm going to give you some tips on how I structure my day for um, success and positivity. Um, there's four things that I do. Um, first thing, attitude practice. So I do. Day and Ilvi does it too. We have our little. Where are they? Oh. I even found like a gratitude journal for like I don't know if you can see it for for kids. So here's mine and here's hers. So I do this every day and um, I do this to. So it's not ideal, right? I'm a single mom. It's just me and all day every day and. It's not going to run smoothly. It's not going to be I ideal. And um, I had to stop cycle when uh, quarantine started. And I had to do that by focusing on the positives. And um, I was so positive that I made some people mad on Instagram because they said, <laughs> this is not a time for you to be positive. You know, people are suffering. And I'm like, hey, I'm really sorry. You should just unfollow me. Because I'm I'm trying I'm trying the best that I can and I want I want to be positive for my daughter so so I know it is really hard and I I don't know everyone's situation and I'm not making light of whatever people are going through but um, I taking the time doing gratitude and focusing on all the good things that are happening even if you had a really bad day will bring you back to um, just trying to have joy in your life and um so i know i know like so many moms are like very overwhelmed working from home and homeschooling their kids and and i've i've seen a lot of negativity around it and um i only have one child of course so it's a little bit easier for me but negativity out in my case for example is because my daughter um had three open surgeries and she like almost she really struggled she you know it was um though she made it so so basically when i'm 
struggling through my homeschooling, I think of, okay, gratitude practice. She's here with me. It's a struggle. It's hard, but she's here with me. And I sometimes want to say that, and I, I know that they're going to like, just, you know, if someone's getting mad at me for being too positive, they're going to get mad at me for saying, you know, your children are here. Like they're not, you know, rejoice in that. So anyway, so grad practice. Um, second thing I do every day, I wake up and I do a meditation and um, working from home long, it's, I mean, you're not going anywhere. You're not changing anything up. You can still, um, you live and work in the same space. So I found that if I start with a meditation, um, it starts my day with intention and focus to a good day not a perfect day but a good day that i can have you know find some joy in so and i'm not good at self meditation if i i do guided so i use a shine app it's called it's called shine and every day they you know they have something um and it's really helped me to what other people might be going through right now during covid so um i love that app but you can use anything um for meditation and it's just a it's, it's not like 30 minutes. I know some people like meditate for hours and hours, but it's just, you know, less than 10 minutes every day. So wake up meditation. And then I work out every day, every day I do a workout. Um, and when I was going into the office wake up at four 30 in the morning to do this workout and do my writing and do all my things. So, but the positive is I'm not going to the office anymore. Right. So I'm sleeping in a little, and um, I'm doing this workout and it's not so much like, you know, um, I'm trying, you know, I, I'm trying to lose weight. I'm trying. It's more about this workout and gives you a sense of accomplishment for the rest of the day. And you carry mm -hmm. this throughout. The day. So, you know, you're just you're building day with this level of accomplishment, intention, focus and positivity. So that's what I do every day. Now, the fourth, you really are like, oh, but I don't have time for all these things you're telling me. You're not helping me. Okay, so a while ago when um, I was really struggling, I was starting my writing business, still full-time software engineer and you know, single mom. I uh, was feeling like I don't have time for everything. What do, something's gotta give, I need to give up something. What, what do I do? So I came across this book, uh, Laura Vanderkam, I suggest you read it. It's called, I know how she does it. And she actually, you guys, have you guys read it? No. Oh my gosh. No. So she actually did research and contacted women who are successful. Like everyone that she contacted, um, you know, made over $100,000 a year. So these were successful women. And she had them log everything that they did in 15 minute increments for it was like a month or something. So I can do it for I did it for a week. And then I actually saw with my own eyes that I actually did have time. And beforehand, I just I was just working on a feeling. Like I, I I'm so overwhelmed. Like, you know, you get you get caught up in that. But now I'm like, don't make any don't have the data because otherwise you're just working off of feelings. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sorry. Okay. Okay. After. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, um, so that's what I did. So that's like my suggestion for you for time management and, and basically, you know, to just, it's not going to, it's not going to go perfectly. I mean, maybe you can get it to where, where I don't have perfect days. I do end up having to offset my work on the weekends or I work later, you know, because of all the stuff that I do and to get my writing in and, you know, you know, I have to, I have to publish frequently and the data science um, thing now is an extra 10 hour. I mean, I just have to be flexible. And I think um, doing that mind shift with all those things that I did um, have helped me be okay with it. Okay, that's it. So any questions? <laughs>
So I have a question about this working out. I have I have that part down that I'm I do every day. <laughs> but in terms of some days you can work out harder, some days you kind of just want to take it easy. Do you consider like just a walk? Do you get outside for like a certain amount of time, like, or do you do stuff inside and both, or what? How do you clear your mind that way as well? So I so I actually um, I so I do a workout in the morning every day. It's not always I follow like a program, so it's. Some days are hard, it's like structure, and then usually weekends it'll be like easier workouts, like stretching. So it's not like hard going workouts every day, but I, I have trouble with anxiety. Um, so I have to also run. So okay, uh, yeah. my yeah, I I did I yeah, so I so I do that in the afternoons with my daughter. Um she's I put her in the stroller and I run and I listen to an audio book and Nice. Um, yeah. So yeah, I I just to uh, um just manage my anxiety. But yeah, I have to try. I'm gonna try the other things too. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. How long? How much sleep do you get a night? Me? Um, I get about seven to eight hours. Um, but um. I do realize that because of stuff that I do, like, like I'm like working until I go to bed, you know, <clears throat> um, I'm always like, you know, thinking of something or writing something like before I go to bed. So it's like, it's like a long stretch, but I'm able to do that now because I'm not driving. And that was time taking way of doing like a menial thing. I mean, I would listen to audiobooks, but. I used to, when I was really, really like writing a lot. I would do into my phone, to get my writing in. Um, and that was in the beginning when I was getting my pen up and running. Um, but I don't much anymore. Any other questions? So with a gratitude journal with your, cause I have a four year old as well. Do you, yeah. how do you get, do you get her to say things and then you just transcribe it for her or? Um, so she, um, I don't know if you can hurt. She's yeah. So it looks like this. Can you see it? Mm, no. Cause your back, your virtual background yeah. maybe is. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it off. I'll reach out to you later too. If we don't have enough time. So that's what it looks like. Oh, it, cool. You know? Yeah. And here's the. And we talk about because she's, you know, say things. I'm like, that's not the question. <laughs> <laughs> and I use the um, Rachel Hollis came out with a gratitude journal. That's the one that I use. What, what, where did you learn to be a software engineer? I went to the iron yard. Mm. Yeah, when it was in Charleston and Mount Pleasant and was, um, working as an ICU nurse still at the time, I, uh, did not quit my job and I was, it was wow. all day, like Monday through Friday and weekends, but I burnt out of being a nurse that I was, it, I don't know it's like my leverage to make me i'm going to this because this weekend i'm going to be a nurse again reminding me yeah so but the iron yard is gone now right I guess. yeah it's too bad yeah and are there any other goals that you're going toward yourself in terms of your engineering or your what's your next step for your career or is your, are your priorities set because you're a mom and that's your number one priority um so for me um i i still want to continue you know with software i'm at this um where i really like machine learning too so i'm 
I feel like people are either one or the other. I, I don't know. And I'm, I'm at that point right now where I'm, I'm like, uh, do I need to decide? Cause I'm doing, I, I love them both. Uh, so I do want to continue that. I do like that. Um, and, um, I want, I want to write a book that's under my name. That's not under the genre that I'm doing. Um, that's, you know, in particular to helping mom, moms, like just, um, get out of that idea that it's, you know, miserable. I mean, I get, you know, there's stigma kind of attached to single, single moms. And so, you know, people always, they hear I'm a single mom and they're always like, oh, you're, you must be struggling. And I'm like, oh, I'm really <laughs> not, I'm really doing great. But I, I, I want to change that narrative that goes to being a single mom, because like, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm having, I'm having a great time. So I'm, you know, have a goal for writing that. And, um, yeah, I want to, and I, I really love that, um, women from all over this woman from Italy reached out to me about, um, coding. I mean, stuff like that. I love doing that. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Claudia, are you talking? No one. Oh, I can hear you now. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Um, thanks for your time and also um, it's been an inspiration. Um, I'm not a um, single mom, but I'm a mom of several kids. And I have a background that's not really technology, but I'm trying to figure out how to get more in this space and understand how I can bring my skill set to add value. And I'm wondering how do you go about finding the right mentors and people to help not only learn from, but contribute and grow from so that you can find the right place? Because obviously there's a lot of opportunity in tech and Charleston's a growing, amazing place for it. But there are also people weighing local opportunities versus you know, remote and national opportunities where you may be tied to a broader organization, but not have the same cultural and connection locally. It's a struggle. Find your way and find yeah. the right people. Yeah, absolutely. When I first started, I only startups. And that was, which I think is typical for junior devs. And um, I, it was it was hard because there was no one to ask questions. I would be on Stack Overflow, like, please help me. And you know that everyone's so mean on there. And I just had to because I needed to figure this out. I mean, I was like a de de detective. I would find someone who wrote some blog and I would find his email that was on <laughs> write him, like, please help me figure this out. Um, so I mean, I, Booz Allen has really been such a great, I feel like I have really grown from being with this company because it is really large. And they have um, people with, you know, different expertise. And then if you you move, so I moved um, different projects to the one I'm on now. So you know, and then in a startup or a smaller company, um, like I think what's typical, like in Charleston, really have that. You're gonna be stuck in one tech stack in that company, and then not be able to to move around to another one. So. Um, and I, but also I, I, Facebook reached out to me and, um, I was like, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you just like, you know, whatever. So I did like a little interview with the recruiting and, and, um, I said, you know, I'm working at a really great place right now, which was Booz Allen and, um, they really value family. And if my daughter has a surgery, like I can remotely. And she said, oh yeah, we really, really frown upon that. We really want, I mean, it's different now, right? Obviously, because COVID. But at that time she was like, we really want our engineers in house. And I was like, okay, this is not a good fit. <laughs> and it's Facebook, right? So, I mean, it's 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 crazy. Like you would think a place like Facebook would, would say, yeah, sure. Like do whatever, whatever works for you, mm -hmm. work-life balance, but no. So, wow. Yeah. It's good that, that you have like you you have the boundaries and you have the expectations to do your how to do your best work. 
and where, what environment makes that possible? Because I think that's part of it is there are plenty of people in technology working, killing themselves, right? Doing amazing work, but it's, it can be 24 seven. And if you are a remote worker too, I think the expectation is sometimes you're, you're available whenever, wherever. So um, it's great I to hear you. Well, it wasn't always like 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 that. Like Wade is here. He was on. He's on my team. Um, we went through a little little spot there where we were all working like I don't even know, like over sixty constant. And um, it happened right around the time my quarantine started. So everyone just kind of like eased into work working from home, and then it just me at least. I had to take some time off and say, I'm just not doing this anymore. I mean, my daughter is like suffering, <laughs> you know, I mean, I need, I'm like, I actually homeschool her, like actually give her lessons. I can't just, just have her watch Netflix. Like I really need to like take some time. So it took, it took a little bit transition for me, um, take some time off, think about, I need to do how I need to structure things and then just don't work as much and I know that's easy to say because I have friends who work at Amazon and Google that work I mean but that's but that's expectation at that comp at that level I do expect you to work over 60 hours and devote your life there so you have to um like balance what it what is important to you and for me it's my daughter and I just happened to work at a great company too. And um, yeah, like Facebook called me and said, you know, but I'm like, no. And I don't care how much you pay me, like it's still not gonna be enough because I want to be with my daughter when she's having surgery, <laughs> you know? <laughs> do, you, do you find most of your training and skill growth is coming from internally at your company or are you still looking at industry resources to gather that? In, internally, like I've really grown just from the team that I'm on right now, and it wasn't like that. Um, I was on another team before, and um, it, the whole like I'm, you know, I'm a woman. This I'm new to this. Like I was very in the team, yeah. But I'm, I'm, but then Booz Allen is a place where you can move to another. You're not stuck anywhere. So then I happened to move on this great team where. Um, Everyone wants to teach. And then also I'm a junior. Also, I, I needed to accept I'm a junior developer. Like and my career, my job leader said, we know you're a junior developer. We know you're learning. Don't feel bad about it. If we wanted a senior person, that's who we would have gotten this project. So I had to let go of this feeling like. I'm I'm so horrible. I need to just quit and just do nothing. Like you know, because <laughs> I'm not at this certain level. But um, yeah. So 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 there there's that. When you're when you're when you when they hire you as a junior developer, they know that you're a junior develop. If they're a good company, if they're reasonable, I I just will say some startups will not really know what that means in my put you in a bind, but for the most part, you're still learning. <laughs> I'm really, sorry, Amy, I have to jump. You're amazing okay. and inspiration. And we'll do it again tomorrow. Yes, see you tomorrow. <laughs> well, Claudia, I wanted to quickly say that if you are, the mentorship program with the Women in Tech is, is really awesome, so definitely follow that on Slack and um, just keep, try to keep up to date with that. I think there's some new stuff happening soon. Great, thank you, Jennifer. Hey, Erin. <laughs> we finished early, so I thought I'd jump on and see what I could Hi. learn from you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys know, are the breakout sessions also recorded or, or no? I think they are. Yeah, it says recording in progress. Oh, that's good. 
yeah, because you guys were so amazing. I, I really would love for more people to, to, mm -hmm. to be able to hear you. Yeah, it's true. I couldn't so, figure out who I wanted to go hang out with afterwards. Yeah, I, I know, like, I did. It's yours, Erin. <laughs> Where are your kids right now? Are they um are they at your feet like pulling at your ankles like my mine is? <laughs> yeah, they're they're with their dad this week. So <laughs> Yeah. I was a little thankful for that. It's hard to <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to be on video calls with the three of them. <laughs> oh yeah. What, what are their ages? Um, they are eight, five, and two. <sighs> yeah. So my daughter is in third grade, and then um, my son just started kindergarten. So. I remember when Aaron one. Aaron was um one of the people that showed up to volunteer for women in tech when I first asked for volunteers while she was still at Flatiron. And then also she brought all three kids to the Stemapalooza day that we had at Boomtown last year. And the highlight of the entire day for me was, <laughs> besides seeing Erin schlepping with all of her kids, was her daughter sobbing because she didn't want to leave. And that's oh. when you, that's when I knew the day had been a real success. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Well, what was your, um, you said you had a background in something else, but what is it? Um, I moved from Atlanta last fall, um, came from Coca-Cola, Kellogg's, uh, Kids 2, so durables and food and beverage marketing, and commercialization. So I, when I read job descriptions for product management and it says I need to do sprints with engineers, I'm like, I launched 70 products, but it appears that they're not relevant in technology. So I'm, I'm very humbled, but excited to get into tech. I just... I'm trying to figure out where to sharpen the saw and, and get involved in and add value. So it's been a little bit of a fish out of water for me, but I came to Dig South last year and I was so inspired, um, just wanting to be part of this community. So um, thank you to Nina and everyone who's you know been a catalyst in this group because I want to get more involved and whether that's volunteering or mentorship or other ways, I think I'm going to hopefully find a home here eventually. But Again, Claudia, are you on our Slack channel? I'm sorry, my what, Nina? Are you on the Slack channel? Um, I have been. I, I haven't been active on the, okay. the group. Just wanted to know if, if I if we wanted to get a hold of you, we could reach you there. Yeah, I, I will. Uh, I've used it, but I haven't been on there actively. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I um. It's well, thanks, you guys. I have to. I have to jump, but thank you so much, everybody. This is awesome. Thanks to everyone. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for listening. I appreciate all the great advice. All right, bye.